Welcome to the MFR Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how you can create a six-figure MFR practice. I'm your host, Heather Hommel. Not only have I been practicing MFR for 11 years, I'm also a life and business coach, especially for MFR therapists. My goal is for you to understand how to get fully booked, how to talk to your clients, and how to make sure they understand what's possible for them with MFR treatment. I'm here to help you stop under earning, overworking, and burning out. I'll lend support so you can create the MFR practice you've always wanted. Learn how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town, and even if you're just starting out, and even if you've ran your practice for years. Let's go. Let's talk about the impact of all MFR therapists being six-figure earners. MFR therapists who decide they want more and do the work to help more clients are changing their communities. They help their clients get out of pain for longer and back to active lifestyles. Every day, I help MFR therapists to raise their rates, overcome objections, and sell MFR with confidence and in an empowered way. When you have these three skills, you become fully booked, you make more money, and you're able to enjoy your life outside of work even more. And you can afford things like more treatment for yourself and more vacations for your family. And who doesn't want that? Right now, the doors are open to join us inside the MFR Coaches 12-Month Business Foundation Program. Join now and start your 90-day journey through the foundation modules. Join our weekly live coaching calls and fast track your way through any confusion or questions that you have about your MFR business. With over 50 current members, you can enjoy a supportive community inside our Facebook group where me and my team are just a tag away to support you and answer any questions. When you join by November 15th, you not only get the last opportunity to enroll in 2023, but I'll be mailing you out a copy of the workbook. Inside the workbook, you'll find guidance on your next steps so you are never overwhelmed as you create a business that you love. One other special bonus when you enroll November 1st through 15th is the option to make three payments at no additional cost to you. So take advantage of this easy payment plan and get started now. Doors close November 15th. Go to www.themfrcoach.com backslash coaching. There's a link in the show notes, terms and conditions apply. All right. You guys are all here to learn how to sell MFR to anyone in any situation. We've waited long enough, so let's get going. On today's agenda, we're going to go over three reasons you aren't selling MFR, four strategies to implement today so that you can start selling MFR immediately. We're going to open the doors to my 12-month coaching program, and then I'm going to answer all of your questions and also announce a time-sensitive bonus. All right. We are going to talk about selling MFR on purpose today. And when you sell MFR on purpose, you truly can sell MFR to anyone in any situation. Selling MFR doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be complicated. In fact, I believe it isn't hard and it isn't complicated. When you learn the four strategies that I'm going to teach you today, you'll start selling more MFR than ever, and you can implement it today with any clients that you have this afternoon. This is going to allow you to become the therapist that can be fully booked, seeing 20 clients or less, and creating a six-figure MFR business. And this is really important to me that you learn this skill because I want all MFR therapists to never under-earn or burn out. I want you to walk away today knowing where you are at, what is keeping you from selling, and the four things you can take action on right away to improve your ability to sell MFR to anyone. You are a John Barnes trained MFR therapist. And if you're not, what's happening? Why are you here? (laughs) You're in the only room outside of MFR seminars where you don't have to be careful here. You don't have to be worried that your clients are listening in or that someone's going to be judging you. Everyone here is an MFR therapist who either has a business or wants to have a business. And that's the common bond that we all have. That and the fact that I believe that everybody here is also very awesome. You guys are out changing the world by doing MFR only, and you are here to learn how to sell it on purpose. So 
You want to have a fully booked practice, one that doesn't require you to overwork and under earn. And you're here because you want to learn how to sell MFR to your clients. You're here because you want to figure out what's keeping clients from buying from you. And you're here because you want to be fully booked or stay fully booked for always and forever, right? So you're here to learn how to sell MFR on purpose so you can stop being confused about why you aren't fully booked and you can have a really full MFR practice, one that keeps you from under earning and burning out. So who the heck am I, right? Who is this lady talking to you right now? Well, I am Heather Hommel and I am the MFR coach. I help MFR therapists who have been trained by John Barnes to have an MFR business where you see 20 clients or less and you create the ability to earn six figures or more each and every year. I work with MFR therapists only because I want MFR therapists to have a coach who truly gets them and to have a coach that really understands what it takes to create that fully booked practice. I don't want you to have to waste any time explaining to me what you do, why you do it, and why it's so special. I'm an expert level trained MFR therapist. I owned a practice for over 10 years and I have made all of the mistakes all of them. Trust me. <laughs> and it is my mission to never have you or any other MFR therapist under earn or burn out so that MFR becomes mainstream and just what people do to take care of themselves. I truly believe that MFR can be and will be everywhere. And it is my mission to ensure that that happens. So let's talk about your main problem right now. Many of you likely think that you're selling MFR. You think selling means asking your client when they want to come back or when you say book online in your social media posts. And some of you aren't even doing this, but most of you aren't selling MFR at all, not even a little bit. You think you're selling when you talk about cross-hand releases or the science behind MFR and everything you just learned that you're excited about at that last seminar you attended. And you think saying more or comparing and contrasting the differences of MFR to other modalities is selling MFR. But it's not, and you're not selling MFR at all when you're doing those things. And this can be for several reasons, right? You believe probably that selling MFR could be bad, so you avoid it altogether, or you are selling the wrong thing, or you think that the client is the expert in the room. I'm going to give you three scenarios here, and I want you to listen closely and figure out which one, or maybe you relate to all of these characters, which one resonates with you the most, okay? These all represent things I see MFR therapists doing and if I'm just being completely honest, these are all of the people that I was before I became the person that could sell MFR. Nobody be offended, okay? Like These are literally me. <laughs> maybe you are nowhere Nellie right now, or maybe you've been her. She thinks things like, I'm not the expert. I don't know what I'm doing. She feels insecure and she has imposter syndrome. She does things like wait waits for the next seminar, she procrastinates, and she's really hoping to feel confident sometime soon. Maybe you're waiting on your website, your social media, and online booking to sell and explain MFR for you. No one even knows you're there to give them MFR because you don't tell them. Maybe you're afraid to talk about MFR, so you'd rather just not. You secretly hope maybe that no one even ever asks you about it. You're waiting to feel more confident and comfortable, and you think it might take you a long time. You think after one more seminar, you'll finally feel better giving treatments. You're waiting to feel like an expert and waiting for your confidence to come to you. If you might be a nowhere Nelly, please put a comment. Please comment the number one in the chat now. Let's check out the chat. Let's see what you guys are saying. Ah, yes. Kim, Aaron, Megan, Robin, Linda, Erica, lots of you, Chris, Mimi, Jessica. Yeah. Look at how many Nowhere Nellies we have. This is great. We're going to talk about how you can um, go from Nowhere Nelly to the next thing. Awesome. Thank you guys for your participation. All right. So 
you can go from nowhere, Nelly, to being the expert in the room. And I want you to really watch your progression from nowhere, Nelly, to being the expert in the room. And if you've already made that transition, what that was like for you. After today, if you've been behaving like nowhere, Nelly, you'll see how and where you can shift your self-concept towards becoming the expert in the room instead of nowhere, Nelly. You'll be on to yourself about your lack of feeling like an expert. So you can work towards showing up as the expert in the room, each and every treatment. You'll feel confident. You'll start today instead of putting off your confidence until you take another seminar. So if this is you, just keep paying attention because I'm going to give you the solution to go from nowhere, Nelly, to the expert in the room during this presentation. Maybe you are time on the table, Tammy. Tammy thinks things like people want options. I'll get paid more if I have longer sessions available. And she also thinks that people want deals. She feels confused and graspy a lot of the time. And some of the things she does is she offers lots of different price points. She works anytime someone wants a session and she accommodates all her clients' requests. You might be time on the table, Tammy. If I were to log on to book an appointment with you and I'd see that there were more than one option for me to book. When you create all these options for your client, you really are focused on selling time on your table. Maybe you have lots of options like 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, or even 90 minute sessions, and each one at a different price point. You're thinking your clients want all of these options, but you're really just selling time on the table and not selling MFR. Put a two in the chat if this is you or if this has ever been you. Let's check out the chat. Wendy's saying she's a two and Sarah's a two. Lindsay's a two. Christy's a two also. Linda, Tanya, Allie. Yeah. Look at all of you guys. Ones and twos. I love it. Right? Me too. Me too. All right. So we talked about time on the table, Tammy. And I want to talk a little bit more about her about what it's like to stop being her. So when you stop being time on the table, Tammy, you're going to stop selling literally time on the table, and you're going to start selling the benefits of MFR and the results of getting not just one treatment, but lots of treatment. Today, you're going to learn what to sell. So you stop selling time on the table, like time on the table, Tammy, and you start selling the benefits of MFR. This means getting really clear on what happens when people get a lot of MFR from you and selling the benefits of MFR instead of that time contingent. You'll stop being focused about, yeah, you'll stop being confused and you'll start getting focused about what you're selling. Couldn't read my own typed writing, you guys. Um, and some of the things you can change right away is you can go and edit your website and eliminate all of those treatment options right away. The sooner you clean that up and you clean up what you sell, your clients will be clearer and you'll be clearer too. They won't waste time thinking about which option is right for them. No one really wants to buy time on the table. They want to buy results. All right, let's talk about our third person. Leave it up to them, Lena. She thinks things like, I don't want to be pushy. It's polite to leave it up to the client. I can't promise that they'll get better. She feels apprehensive, passive, and scared. And some of the things she does is she asks the client, when do you want to come back? You know your body better than me. She doesn't question what the client decides or uses as an excuse not to come back. And she also worries that the client will ask her questions. <laughs> and you're probably thinking, well, I don't want to be salesy or pushy. So you tell your client to use their best judgment and intuition on when to come back for treatment. After all, they know their body best, but once they leave, you likely never see those clients again. Or worse, they come back so infrequently, they never get the results that are truly possible for them. All right, if you are leave it up to them, Lena, or even just a little bit, put a three in the chat box. Let's see, I'm gonna meet all my Lenas here. We had a lot of twos, you guys. All right, so Jessica, Chris, Cindy Adams is like, yes. Patty, Angie, Linda, Gwen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Threes, threes, threes. Yes. And even someone had a question like, is it okay to put John Barnes method of MFR on your website or social media after attending just two trainings? Yeah. Why not Mimi? Why not? It's training that you have. You are an MFR therapist. Like you can't unknow what you know. Lots of threes here. You guys are great. So fun. All right. And Lindsay says she's a recovering two and three. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. Recovery is an option for all of us. This is great. Hi, Gina. I see that you're a one and a three. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Now the recovery for leave it up to them, Lena, is you start to give a clear treatment plan. That's going to solve your client's problems. You confidently answer any questions that your clients have for you. And you just really become unbothered by clients that say no. After today, if you've been leave it up to them, Lena, which like I said before, we're probably all guilty of, we're all admitting it out loud today. You're going to learn today that you can be the expert in the room, even if you aren't yet at expert status through MFR seminars, you'll start to offer your clients a treatment plan that solves their problem. And you'll also learn today that it is possible to be unbothered by client questions. And if they say no. A lot of the problems with selling MFR really boil down to that inability for us to hear no, because it just, we just think we're going to break if we hear that. When you're unbothered by any client question, you'll see that clients book and rebook because they are so clear. You'll take on any client question your client has and give them a clear answer so that they can opt in sooner. You'll no longer leave it up to the client to decide, and you'll tell them exactly what is possible for them if they work with you and what results they can expect. You'll be clear and they'll be clear. All three of these therapist profiles have one thing in common. They lack confidence, they lack direction, and the bottom line is none of them are selling MFR on purpose. You'll know for sure if you have any of this happening in your business, if you aren't fully booked, you do many one-off sessions, you aren't making the amount of money that you desire to make in your practice, you have thoughts or worries that you might burn out, or you are burning out. So here's the solution, and it's actually really simple. Dun, da, da, da. The solution is you need to sell MFR on purpose, okay? I want you to know that even if you're nowhere Nelly or time on the table, Tammy, or even leave it up to them, Lena, there is hope. And today's training is going to teach you how, how to sell MFR on purpose and with purpose. When you sell MFR on purpose, you will be the expert in the room. You will learn exactly what to say and how to say it. You'll handle client questions and concerns, and you won't be worried about clients who say no. Can you even imagine? My coach, Brooke Castillo, says that in order to increase sales, you have to increase your tolerance for hearing the word no. As you make more offers on purpose, you'll hear no, but you'll also hear yes. So it's just math, right? Mathematically, the more no's also means the more yeses. When you make lots of offers to help your clients, you'll sell more MFR than ever. You will get fully booked, you'll stay fully booked, and you'll notice that your clients not only get better results because of this, but the majority of them will get even better results faster. And you'll be blown away by how well your clients do, not just some of them, but all of them, because they will not only get treatment with you, but they will stay in treatment longer, way longer. Their pain will decrease much more their ability to be active will increase and their overall quality of life and potential for true healing will happen for them because you sold MFR on purpose. And this also includes you, the ability to quit hiding, quit fearing no, quit avoiding their questions and showing up as the expert in the room to sell MFR to them. I just want to give you a little brief background about my story. You heard me say earlier that I ran my MFR practice for over 10 years and that I'm an expert trained John Barnes MFR therapist. But before that, I was an uh before that I was an expert level of training. I was also a novice, an intermediate, an advanced therapist, and a business owner. And I was also blonde. 
I had a lot of one-off clients and an inconsistent schedule. I worked nights and weekends to make sure I had enough money to pay my rent and my expenses. I'd get clients to come in for lots of one-off sessions, maybe a couple of packages, and then they'd decide to stop. And I had no real solution to getting them to stay in treatment. I left it up to them and thought they knew best. And I definitely wasn't going to question them ever. I felt ill-equipped as a new therapist to even talk about what was possible for clients if they got more treatment closer together. And instead, I would schedule them in a way that would literally take forever for them to get results. You know, I feel like we learn this in school. It's a standard of one time a week, one time a month, one time a quarter, whatever is socially acceptable. Whatever worked for them, I made work for me. Only that set them up for less than great results. I also wasn't super willing to hear clients say no. There's just something about that that made me want to crawl into a hole. One day I realized though that I wasn't selling MFR because of how I thought about selling and what I made selling mean about me if I were to do it. I made selling MFR mean that I was slimy, salesy, and icky. And I don't know who here can relate to that feeling, but I really thought that I was doing something wrong. And I left it up to clients to decide what was best for them. I kept my clients from experiencing varsity level results, results that I'd be proud to have my name on when I wasn't selling MFR on purpose. And I want to have my name on the good results, right? And I bet all of you guys do too. We don't want our names on those one-off results. So what changed? I started being completely direct about what was possible for my clients. I started selling them the results of working with me long-term instead of focusing on the difference between MFR and whatever modality they had tried. And instead of selling them lots of treatment time options, I focused on what I believed would get them better, more treatment, closer together. When I wasn't confused, turns out my clients weren't confused either. Clients got better results faster. This helped me to grow my confidence. Future, future, fewer clients discharged themselves before they reached full results because I really became that therapist who could ask them hard questions instead of just agreeing with them when they wanted to take a break or they decided to stop prioritizing treatment. And I grew my ability to hear no and not make it mean anything about me or anything about the client. Clients started to come for more and more treatment and stay in treatment longer. I got fully booked, stayed fully booked, and made more money. And I had a constant flow of clients because of this. And I got super good at overcoming objections and super good at explaining why MFR worked and what was possible for people who are in pain. And I did this all through practice and trial and error. And I'm asking for you guys to really listen in today when we get into the strategy section to listen to and be aware of like where you haven't practiced or where you haven't taken risks and where you could use trial and error to help you sell MFR on purpose. Okay. After doing this, I helped hundreds and hundreds of people change the quality and experience of their lives because they could solve their chronic and unexplained pain issues and truly heal with my help. Selling MFR on purpose helped me and it's what I teach and how I help MFR therapists get fully booked and see 20 clients or less and still make $100,000 a year or more. When you sell MFR on purpose, you change both your business and your life outside of your business. Now let's talk about the four strategies you can implement as soon as we are off this training to sell MFR on purpose, get fully booked, get better, get clients, better outcomes, and make more money in your MFR practice. You're going to want to get your pen and your paper and get ready to take notes. But for anyone that can't take notes right now, or anyone panicking because they're afraid they're not going to write down the notes perfectly, just remember that I'm going to send out a replay to you. You can watch it more than once. It's going to be available for you for just about two weeks. So you have plenty of time to re-listen to this. And I actually recommend re-listening to this and getting something else out of it. Okay. So 
The four strategies we're going to learn today is one, how to be the expert in the room, even before you're an expert level trained MFR therapist. You're going to learn how to talk about benefits and results. You're going to learn how to become the person that can answer any question your client has with confidence. And the fourth strategy of being willing to hear no. Let's talk about each strategy in detail so you know what to focus on when you leave here today and you can kind of see where you're at, see your gaps and know what to do with that information. So strategy number one, be the expert in the room. When you aren't being the expert in the room, it looks like this. You leave it up to your client to decide the treatment plan and when or if they'll be back. You experience many one-off sessions you have clients that say yes to treatment and then cancel late or no show. Who here has experienced any of these things? Just comment me in the chat and tell me if, if you're currently having this or maybe you've gone through this before. Yeah, lots of you, right? It's, it's everybody. This is why this training is so important. Yeah, it's so many of you guys. Yep, okay. So... Let me just get back to my notes. When you become the expert in the room, you decide not to wait for the next seminar to bring you confidence. You decide like, I know enough, I can help people. You tell your client what you know is possible for them. You tell your client what's at stake if they don't get the help and that they need and they want. And you start to embody I can treat anyone who walks into the room energy. While it's easy to think the client knows best and it might feel like you're doing them even a service by allowing them to decide what they want, it's not in their best interest. You are the expert in the room between you and the client. Like you have the training, they don't have the training and the knowledge that you have. When you aren't the expert in the room, you're letting someone without the knowledge and skill level you have to make an uninformed decision about their care. And that's where it's really unfortunate. Between you and your client, like I said earlier, you know exactly what's at stake if they don't get the help that they need and they want. They'll leave and they'll continue to be in pain. And worse, they won't believe that MFR can help them. There's a lot at stake if you play small in order to try to be perfect in order to get people to buy from you. But this is something I do inside my program. I teach you how to believe not only in yourself, but in your clients and also in the results that MFR can provide so that you can use that belief to help you when you're having sales conversations. When you get more of your clients to understand and to opt into not just one-off treatments, but lots of treatments, your confidence will grow and your clients' results will ultimately improve. Even as a new therapist, you can understand the results that are possible for your clients when they stay versus when they stay with you long-term versus just selling a time frame that focuses on trying to get results quickly. When you stop relying on one more seminar to feel better, you'll start taking MFR seminars from an energy of how is this helping me improve my skill set instead of I need this to finally be good or finally be able to have a higher listing on the directory, right? Inside my program, we spend time working directly to build up and flex that confidence of talking about what is possible for clients. We get granular about the exact ways you help people and exactly what's at stake for your clients when you don't tell them you can help them or you don't help them have hope that they can get out of pain. I even have a program inside my program that's called 90 Day Foundations, and you get to work on covering precisely what's keeping you back from stepping into I'm an MFR therapist energy and I can treat anyone who walks into my room so that you can take on that identity and sell MFR on purpose right away, regardless of your actual seminar skill level. I want to introduce you to someone who is an example of being the expert in the room. This is my client, Tracy Hobby. Many of you um, might recognize her. She's been on, she was just at MFR3. Lots of you guys are here from coaching. You know, Tracy, she's also um, been on my podcast several times. So I recommend going and um, 
digging out her old episodes and listening to her. Tracy's the owner of Touch of Wellness Myofascial Release. She's a great example of someone who knows how to be the expert in her treatment room. She's famous in my program for becoming her own best referral source too. It's a quote she uses quite often and I just get a kick out of it every time I hear it. But Tracy used to think it was polite to leave it up to the client to decide to be the expert of their body. She didn't want to be pushy and she didn't think she could promise that they would get better. And I think many of you can probably empathize with that and or maybe even having that same thought like, well, I can't promise anything. But Tracy decided to get really clear on what results were possible for her clients and what she could promise as a result. And when she was clear on the results she wanted her name on, she was able to offer those. She wanted her clients to receive varsity level care and get varsity level results. And she really embodies, I am the expert in the treatment room energy. And because of this, she can and does sell MFR to anyone in any situation. She went from working as a contractor in someone else's dream to being fully booked and having 10K plus months inside her private MFR only business. And she did it very quickly. It just took her taking control of being the expert in the room. And she worked on expanding her ability to feel uncomfortable while she grew that confidence to embody expert therapist energy. Tracy continually works on growing her capacity to have more confidence in her business and the results clearly show. And you might be thinking, this seems really difficult. Like what's the actual magic or what did she learn? What did you tell her, Heather? What did she start saying to her patients? Give me a script. And I just want you to know that it actually is related to your ability to believe that you are this expert, that you do know enough. And that's exactly what I teach you to do inside my program, to know and feel deeply about yourself. So it's not some follow the yellow brick road, do X, Y, and Z, and you will have this. It's much more about questioning what you are currently thinking about yourself that isn't true, that can be changed so that your truth, like so that you can become the truth of being the expert in the room for yourself. It's these subtle shifts that make the biggest differences, not only for you, but for your, your business and for your clients ultimately so that they can heal. All right. So strategy number two, talk about the benefits and results. You're going to sell MFR on purpose by talking about benefits and results. Let's get into that a little more in detail. You'll know you're doing this or you'll know you're making mistakes doing this if you are talking about the actual modality of MFR instead of the results of MFR. If you're talking too much to your clients, if you're talking in MFR therapist speak, right? These are the kind of words that only another nerdy MFR therapist like me is going to love and appreciate and even understand. And you're also not talking about benefits and results only if you're not promising your client that they can get better or even believing that they can. Or maybe you're not talking about the results and what's actually possible. You might be making it complicated by talking about the modality of MFR. That looks like saying things like cross-hand releases, piezoelectric responses, healing crisis, and comparison to other modalities. Talking too much out of nervous energy, right? Who here does that? <laughs> You're uncomfortable with silence, so you just fill the space. Saying things that only other MFR therapists can understand, like you'll have increased mobility, better range of motion, more energy. These are words clients don't actually use in their day-to-day -day life, so they aren't going to fully understand what they mean. You're avoiding making a promise to your clients that they can and will get better, and you're not talking about the results and what is possible with MFR. You don't clearly and directly tell your client what's possible. You don't say things like you could be running instead of limping. So they don't even have the chance to consider a different reality or a different experience of their life with the results of being able to run instead of limp because you didn't offer it as a possibility. Maybe it's never even occurred to you to do so, right? And you could be confusing a therapy conversation with a sales conversation. Once clients are in treatment, you'll talk about the modality of MFR as appropriate for their understanding. 
But in the sales conversation, they only need to understand the benefits and results. You'll know you're talking about benefits and results only and doing this well if you can explain your client's problem in words that they use. You're not using therapist speak. You allow for silence and you're telling your clients what's possible and reminding them that it's possible for them. It's not just possible and for other people, it's actually for them too. Explain things in the words that your clients already use. Don't talk in words other MFR therapists will appreciate or understand just to feel smart. I used to do this all the, all of the time. Like someone would come in and maybe they were a doctor or a chiropractor or a doctor's wife or a um, husband of a doctor. And I would make things up. I mean, they were real things, but I would talk very smart so that I could feel like I was smart, right? And I didn't allow for a lot of space for silence. So I want you to allow that space for silence, say things, let your clients process what you've said to them and don't fill the space with excessive words. And this is going to be something that you have to be willing to be bad at until you're good at it. Tell your client what is possible and remind them that it's possible for them too, and that you are ready, willing, and able to help them. When you get really good at talking about what's possible when your clients get MFR and get lots of MFR, you really won't be able to stop yourself from seeing the possibilities everywhere. And you'll make bolder offers to help your clients. You'll get clear on exactly what is possible for your clients and what you know you can promise them. The more specific you are about what you can and can't give your client, the more specific you are with what your client does and doesn't want the better you'll be at being able to offer the detailed treatment plan, which includes a timeline, what to expect, as well as the associated costs and all of your policies surrounding getting treatment with you. One second. Inside my program, we have modules on how to ask clients specific questions, starting with the intake form. So you can just tweak your intake form and get a very clear picture on the outcome of what your clients want. So you're not left guessing. You can design your form to give you a detailed picture of what's going on with them from the start. And then that will help you put your plan together of how you're going to help them best, which includes a time frame, how you'll evaluate their project their progress, and the projected costs associated with working with you. I think Sarah Martin's in this room and Tracy might've been here too. So let's talk about my client, Sarah Martin. She's the owner of Fire Rainbow Myofascial Release. And she's also a co-coach in my coaching program. Now she went to coach training and became a coach too. She is an MFR therapist and Sarah is a great example of what happens with you when you talk about the benefits and the results and sell MFR on purpose. So Sarah had a client who was already coming in weekly, right? Which I think for a lot of us, those are dream clients. That's like our goal is to have clients come for weekly treatment. Yet this client was still limping out of her office after treatments. So Sarah decided to check in with this client and talk about what was possible for her if she would agree to come more often. She put it out there for her. And to Sarah's joy, the client said yes, and has not only been coming twice a week for several months, but this client is booked out twice a week for the rest of the year. And this happened over the summer. And I think she's even booked into the next year. This client reports that she's never felt better in her life. She's limping less and able to enjoy being more active and in less pain. And she's reaping the benefits of more MFR. And like I said, she's booked out for the rest of the year and into the new year on this new plan. So this simple shift, this risk that Sarah took by talking about the benefits, even with a long-term client who was already benefiting from treatment, Sarah took the risk of hearing no and was able to help her client even better by talking about what was possible for this client. And now she's doing this more and more with her clients because she knows how much this can change her client's life if she's willing to have these conversations and not just coast. So I like sharing this story. 
All right. Strategy number three, answering your clients' questions with confidence. Let's get into this one. How to know you aren't already doing this. You get annoyed when your client asks you if you take insurance or questions your rate. Who here does this, right? You don't save time for a sales conversation. I saw you waving, Wendy. You don't save time for a sales conversation after treatment. And you don't know what to say if your client asks, like, how long is this going to take? Or what should I expect? Or how much is this going to cost me? Right now, you don't like answering client questions and you get annoyed when people ask you if you take insurance or they tell you your price is expensive. Maybe you freeze. You leave it up to the client to decide if and when they're coming back. You hesitate to tell the client how they can get better when they work with you. You don't offer a clear treatment plan. You get frustrated. You don't practice getting better and growing your confidence around any questions your clients might have. Let me know in the chat if this is also something you might be doing. Just say me. Maybe you make your website or your booking page responsible for answering your patient questions or concerns so that you don't have to, and you really get annoyed if you have to answer a question that the answer is, you have the answer already written out on your website. You think it's annoying if the client asks you something that they should have read online. Or you don't offer a treatment plan to clients because you think you can't promise that they're going to feel any better in any certain amount of time. Like the idea of offering that creates so much pressure inside of you, you just avoid it altogether. Let me know if any of you are experiencing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Jessica, Linda, Robin, Angie, Chris, Mary Ellen. Aaron, yes, lots of you are experiencing that. All right, so let's talk about the solve for this. How to know you have strategy number three down. When you're confident practicing and practice answering the questions outside of the actual client interaction. So this is the strategy on this, right? You're going to want to take the questions that your clients most commonly have, right? And for some of you, it's like, do you take insurance? We just had someone post in the um, our, our Facebook group today on how to handle this question and concern. So you're gonna practice answering it outside of actual client interactions. You're gonna create time for a real sales conversation after you've given that hands-on treatment, after you've had hands on their body, you've done that full evaluation, you have a really clear picture of what's going on with them. And you're going to ask the client high value questions starting from the intake form to maintain that expert energy and show that you clearly understand their problems. And like bonus points, if you understand their problem even better than the client does. I love it when that happens. And then you're going to provide that treatment plan that covers the expectations, the time frame, the cost, and your policies for working with you. So some ways to improve your ability to answer your client questions. Make a running list of those common questions and how you, like when you show up as your best self, how you want to answer them. And these probably include questions like, how much is it going to cost? How long is this going to take? Will I actually get better? And do you take insurance, right? We're always going to get that question. Practice your answers to these questions outside of the client interactions. I cannot say this enough so that you have a game plan and you know what to say ahead of time. When you are clear on your answers, your clients will be clear too. And it's not easy doing this, right? Like, sure, if it was, everyone would be doing this. We'd all be practicing and we'd all feel good all of the time. But what I want you to understand is the point behind practicing these and doing them kind of bad until you get good at it is so that you can evaluate after your real client interactions to see what worked, what didn't work, and what you're going to do differently next time. And that just gives you your recipe for what to do next time to do it even better. During your sales conversations, after you've treated the client, make sure you provide a treatment plan with clear details 
expectations, the time frame, and the cost and deliver it like it's the news. The more you practice selling on purpose, the more you become unbothered by any question. You provide clear information so your client knows exactly what to expect. There are literally no tricks here. We're not trying to convince. We don't have to trick our clients into coming to see us. That's not even a thing. And you get good at asking your clients questions, high value questions to understand better and more deeply what they want. What outcome do they want? What are they unable to do now that they really want to do? And don't leave room for yourself to be confused. So always understand what their goals are. Always understand the result that they want to buy from you. And you understand that better by asking questions. The sooner you start answering questions and asking questions, the easier it is to sell MFR on purpose and the better at selling it you become. You get braver and your clients get better sooner because they opt in and they stay in treatment and they stay in treatment longer. The more MFR you sell on purpose to your clients, the more confidence you create for yourself, the more bolder of offers you make, and you let your clients know that you can help them. More and more clients will opt in and get faster and faster. Actually, it's not even about the speed. They'll get better and faster results. This cycle helps grow your confidence and your business. And I just want to say a note on the, this idea of faster. It's not about speed, but it is about collapsing time from where your client is and where they want to go, right? If they can get better in three treatments, let's not spread those over three months. Let's not make it take 90 days when it could take three hours, okay? This also helps you to get and stay fully booked, working the hours that you want, getting paid the rate that you want to get paid. I have an entire training dedicated just to overcoming objections. Some of you have probably been to that training before, but objections are just questions that your clients have, and you can learn how to overcome them easily instead of getting really activated and upset and worked up and frustrated by client questions. You can learn how to spot the question and answer it with confidence and with the truth. And when you're just telling the truth, you don't have to be scared about these conversations with your clients. You don't have to be scared to sell MFR on purpose. MFR therapists in, inside my program regularly review that training to get better and better at calmly handling questions, right? So this is something we review often because it comes up so often. And a lot of people even say that after doing this training and practicing and evaluating, doing this on purpose, they become like unbothered by objections. Can you imagine, can you imagine that being you and having that as a possibility where you can just sell MFR, people can say no, people can say whatever they want to you, people can have objections and you're just like, no problem, no problems here. It doesn't keep you from selling it. It doesn't make you spin out all of those things. I just love it when MFR therapists learn how to sell MFR on purpose, learn how to answer any questions or objections that your client might have without making it a problem and without making it mean that anything has gone wrong. That is just chef's kiss when that happens. All right, let's talk about my client, Chris Domingo. Chris, I don't know if you're here. If you're here, hello. <laughs> Chris has been on my podcast too, and Sarah has been too. So make sure you go and you find their podcast interviews. They, uh, they're they awesome. Chris is the owner of Shift Mind, Body, Spirit. Chris used to be afraid to answer questions that her client had, especially about price. She worried that if they had a question about her price or if they had comments about it, that they were automatically going to be a no. And this kept her from having a lot of sales conversations, right? It just kept the sales conversation really small. With help from coaching, Chris allowed herself to be kind of bad at overcoming objections and answering her client's questions until she learned how to get good at it. And I just want to emphasize the part where she allowed herself to be bad at it until she got good. And this is a step that a lot of us miss out on. We don't allow for ourselves to be bad at something in order to get good. We just think we should be good at it right away. 
I mean, you guys can go back and watch other trainings I've done and I'm terrible at it. And I just get better every time by allowing myself to be bad at it, allowing for the mistake so that I can get better at it, right? It's the same thing with overcoming objections. All right. So Chris really started to pay attention to the most common questions and objections that her clients were having. And she began to notice what would happen inside her body when clients would ask those questions. And she stopped allowing that discomfort, that feeling in her body to win. And she turned that discomfort feeling into one of curiosity. She basically reprogrammed whatever was happening inside of her. So instead of getting defensive or worried, she just started answering questions. She practiced ahead of time. And if she didn't understand the question, she would ask her own questions so that she was sure she was helping her client in the best way. And you guys can do this too. Chris gained a new confidence around her ability to help because at the end of the day, these con- at the end of these conversations, she was left really believing that she could help these people no matter what. And that was shown in her ability to go from having a side hustle MFR business, making 2K per month of extra income to her ability to have 8K months, still working the same amount of days at her hospital job and the same amount of days in her MFR business, which is just two days a week. So like, can you imagine 8K extra a month working two days a week? The difference for her is she sells MFR on purpose now. Chris is unbothered, truly unbothered. I love it when she tells me this by questions and objections. And when she's not, she comes and gets coached about it. Chris has made selling MFR so easy. She really is an example of how to sell MFR to anyone in any situation. And I just want you to hear this really, this funny story. So recently Chris shared with us in the Facebook group, and she gave me permission to share this with you all, um, that she did such a good job of selling MFR to her date. She was, she was on a first date with someone she met on a dating app. She's out there on this date. She did such a good job of selling MFR to this date that while she didn't get a second date, this person referred someone to her for MFR and she made $1,400 from that referral. I mean, that seems better than a second date to me. (laughs) You go girl. All right. So let's talk about being willing to hear no. This is our final and most likely important and hard strategy for learning how to sell MFR to anyone. Be willing to hear no. If you aren't willing to hear no, or you avoid getting a no at all costs, it looks like this. You're afraid that no means something about you as a therapist. You judge your client as not smart enough to figure it out or understand the value of MFR. You might write them off as not a best fit client. You might spin out and make that one no mean everyone is going to say no. When you hear no, maybe you stop selling altogether and kind of retreat. Or you think a no is only because of your rate and not anything that you can control. All right. So if this is you and you are really triggered by no, I want you to put a no or put, put no in the chat. Let's practice, let's practice saying no and hearing no, put a bunch of no's in the chat. If this is you try something different. There's so many, you guys are so awesome. Yeah. There's so many no's, right? None of us really love hearing no. There's just something about it, but we're going to learn that you can overcome this. So you might be the expert in the room. You might be able to create a treatment plan, but if you aren't willing to hear no, you won't get as many yeses as you want. Remember that formula I gave you in the beginning, my coach, Brooke Castillo, she was, she's like, mathematically, the more offers you make, even when you hear a lot of no's, you're also going to hear a lot of yeses. So the more no's you hear also means more yeses, more opportunity for yes. So keep that in mind. Be willing to hear no. You'll, it, when you're willing to hear no, like when you allow for the discomfort of no to happen and you don't make it mean anything, you'll make more offers to anyone and everyone that asks you about MFR 
You'll be like Chris and you'll offer it on the date, right? We don't know if he was interested in that, but she was. You won't judge your client or yourself if somebody says no. You'll evaluate every no to see what you can do differently next time. And you'll continue to sell MFR even if the client before was a no. And you'll never make your res- your rate responsible for why you're hearing no. You might be thinking that this feels really impossible. After all, no has a lot of meaning and feels terrible when you hear it. I get it. I understand. I just want you to know that with practice and with being on purpose, you can increase your tolerance level to hearing no, and it can happen very quickly. When you increase your tolerance to no, you'll use hearing no as a tool for you instead of against you, right? And make sure you're writing this down. The evaluation is so juicy and delicious. This is such a key ingredient for being able to sell MFR to anyone in any situation. Evaluate the no interactions and learn how to turn them into yeses for the next person. Not how to turn the person that was a no into a yes, but the next person into a yes. You won't spin out when someone says no, the more often you do this. You'll look for what is working and you'll stop doing what isn't working sooner. Might take you a couple of tries, right? Maybe like all week long, you keep getting the same no. Maybe you're just not quite doing your evaluation right, or or maybe you're evaluating, but you're not putting it into action. You'll keep selling MFR and you'll keep improving with each and every offer that you make even when you hear no. And remember, remember this, like really hear me say this. 100% of your clients will pay your rate. I've made an entire training called Raise Your Rate Bootcamp. Some of you guys have been there where you learn how to set your rate and fall in love with your rate. And we set it based on facts and data. And after you've fallen in love with that, You make that your rate and you never make your rate responsible for a client saying no. This is my client, Rachel Pecora. Rachel, if you're here, hello. She's the owner of Northeast Ohio Myofascial Release. Rachel shared a story about a client interaction in our Facebook group, and she gave me permission to share it with you here. I just thought it was such a good example of being willing or risking hearing no risking, asking clients questions, all of this stuff. So she asked a bold question to her client when they had an objection. She was willing to hear no in order to help this client. And I just want you to listen to this interaction. So I've got it written down here. She says, I'm adding a bead to my barf jar because today I called back a potential client who was nearly in tears from pain and went through scheduling an appointment. I'm booked out a few weeks, but we decided on a time. And when it came time to make the prepayment for the appointment, she then wanted to talk to her husband. I heard Heather Hommel come out of my mouth and ask, what do you think your husband would say? Would he be excited for you? I couldn't believe that I said that. (laughs) Rachel is a good example of what's possible when you learn how to hear no and you do the hard thing, you say the hard thing anyways, in order to help this client. Regardless of the answer this client might give you, it gives you an expanded capacity to hear no. And that expanded capacity to hear no will always help you sell more MFR because you're willing to make more offers. And when you make more offers to help, you are less concerned about them saying yes in order for you to feel some sort of way. Rachel's also on my podcast. Go check out her episodes. All right, so let's recap what we've learned here today. In order to sell MFR to anyone in any situation, you need to be able to, one, be the expert in the room, two, talk about the benefits and results of MFR, three, answer any questions your client has with confidence, and four, be willing to hear No, you need to be able to take on and practice taking on until this fits you better than a costume. I'm an MFR therapist and I can help anyone who walks in the door identity like Tracy hobby stick to what is possible for your clients. 
like Sarah Martin. And remember to answer client questions with the confidence that Chris and Rachel have. Overcome objections. Don't get discouraged or freeze if clients ask you questions. Be unbothered and sell MFR in any situation. Remember to practice ahead of time. You're doing this on purpose. It's going to feel clunky until it doesn't. Write down the most common questions and come up with your specific answers so that when you say it, you don't feel like you're saying something you wouldn't say. Some of you might be asking yourself, okay, but is it really this easy? And what's the catch? What am I missing? Can I really do this? Is this for me? And my answer to you is yes, you can take what you've learned today and just make these little tweaks, or you can do this inside my program, the MFR Coaches 12-Month Business Foundation Program. There is no catch to this. This is where you get expert help for your MFR business, for your selling skills, exactly where you are at, for exactly what you need in your business. I want to introduce you to this very special program I've created just for MFR therapists. Everything we've covered today is just the tip of the iceberg, but all the juice and all of the goods and all of the support are inside the MFR Coaches 12-month business foundation program. This is the only program that teaches you how to see 20 clients or less per week while making 100K or more per year. When you learn how to do this, you never risk under earning or burning out and you help a lot of people get out of pain and back to their best lives. And that's the best thing we do. Let's talk about what's included in this program, starting with live weekly calls. You get live support each and every week during the 12 months during a live coaching call. You hear how other people work through their business building. You hear from people who are just like you, just starting out, people that are getting fully booked, people that are fully booked, and people that are making 100K and beyond, and every business in between. Every single call is available as a full video replay and an audio replay inside our private podcast feed. So you can listen right from your smartphone or your smart device on the go. You'll see on the slide here, you can see what a coaching call might look like. Some of you guys might recognize yourselves in this screenshot. This is what it looks like inside the portal. Um, and you could join right now and be on the live coaching call getting coached next Tuesday. This is what it looks like inside the course portal. You get an online course portal, which we're going to talk about more on another slide, but inside the course content, I've created a special section called the 90 day foundations course. This is where you'll create the foundation for your six figure MFR business, where you see those 20 clients or less. This course consists of seven modules. So you know where to start and what to work on and where to spend your time the first 12 weeks of the program. And it's self-paced, so you can do it in the order that you want and use what's relevant for you where you're at in your business. This is just the tip of the iceberg, though, of content available to you right when you join that will help you to see those 20 clients and make six figures. Here's what the rest of the portal looks like. You've got eight additional modules to the 90 day foundations that you can consume. Each one of these bricks has multiple trainings to help you wherever you're at and with whatever you want to work on inside your business. And this is an extensive cache of trainings specific to MFR therapists building businesses. There's no topic left uncovered. There's no guessing and there's no confusion. You want to know what to, put, what to put on your website? I'll tell you the exact things to have, and I'll show you how to build it. Same with your online scheduler and your policies. Maybe you aren't sure what to post on social media. We have, a tra we have multiple trainings for that, and I'll even give you files of professional MFR photography to use and a starter pack of graphics to use for your first posts on social media. 
all of this to help you get going and for you to not be stuck. I never want you to under earn and I never want you to burn out. Additionally, we have live trainings. We have monthly pop-up trainings that are also recorded and available to watch later. I add content regularly based on the needs of the group to ensure that you've got everything you need when you need it to help you create your six-figure MFR business. You also get invited to join our private and exclusive Facebook community where you won't be worried about your clients seeing what you post because they aren't allowed in here. This is the community of MFR therapists only. Inside this group, you get written support from a coach who's always one tag away to help and guide you. You'll have support from other MFR therapists in the group who are doing the same things you are doing. You will never be alone to suffer in silence. Everyone in this group is invested in your wins and helping you celebrate and in supporting you when you are struggling. Coaching is always a tag away, so you never have to be stuck and you never have to wait a long time for support. And there's more. <laughs> I'll also send you a 300-page workbook full of worksheets, training, information to help you easily breeze through any issues in your MFR business. This book is used as a supplement to the course portal and the work you are doing on your business with this workbook. It'll be your guide as you complete Raise Your Rate Bootcamp and as you learn how to sell MFR. This workbook will be like your best friend. And it's a real, it's a real thick and juicy girl. So we've got everything in there. It's a fun supplement. It's also available to you digitally. So if you were to enroll right now while we're on the call, you'll have immediate access to all of these things. I'll send you this in the mail. It'll be there in one to two weeks but you can get, you don't have to wait for it. There's digital access to it too. And then we also track your prog progress. This is a brand new feature we, we rolled out in August. Um, I will send you a weekly reminder to fill out the weekly reporting form. It's a simple form and you can track your progress both with money collected and modules you've completed. And once you reach a 10K month, you get access to bonus calls that are going to start in 2024. And once you complete your 90-day foundations, you unlock a secret bonus from that too. We've been tracking revenue from the MFR therapists inside this program since August. And together, they have reported over $796,000 in sales just since August. It blows my mind, um, and it's incredible to know how powerful MFR therapist businesses are. You guys are powerhouses. You guys can make money, and when MFR therapists are making money and are sufficient and are high-income earners, we change the world, and I want every one of you to know that that's possible for you, and I want you to be a part of this movement, too. You also get a very special member-only discount for your listing on the MFR directory. You get to save $50. This is both for new and renewing listings when you become a member of my program. And I feel like it's kind of a big deal. I don't know any other place or time where they offer a discount. And I just want to remind you all, regardless of if you sign up to have me be your coach and you join my program, the power of having a listing on the therapist directory is huge. And I encourage you to get on there. I've created this special relationship and deal to help you save money with your listing. And it's exclusive to those in my coaching community. This is one way to help clients find you from all over. And it helps therapists to send you referrals too. Most of the time it's, uh, it's, us. It's other therapists on there sending people to you. So get on the directory, regardless of if we ever do business together. When you join for 12 months, you get the live weekly coaching calls with video replays and a private podcast feed. You get the 90 day foundations course. You get the private Facebook group. You get the library of past trainings, hundreds of hours of recorded coaching calls, monthly pop-up trainings on special topics, the thick and juicy workbook with 300 pages, weekly revenue tracking and reporting, and special member only discount for the MFR directory. And you get to be a part of the best community in the world of MFR therapists who will become your friends for life. 
the best community in the world of MFR therapists who become your friends for life. You'll love seeing their faces on calls, hearing their stories while they get coached, and relating to them as your peers. There's nowhere else where these relationships can be found and where you can interact with your colleagues on this level and this often, right? Every week. If you think you love going to seminars to see people who get you, imagine spending an hour a week with them live. Imagine having 24 hours a day support from them inside the Facebook group. This is where you get to have that experience. And it's one of the best things about this program. It's the people that are in it. You might be wondering, okay, great, but how much does this cost? Everything we've discussed here is $3,000. And right now you'll have the option to use my three-month payment plan. So you can break that $3,000 into three payments of $1,000 to make it easier than ever to join. Meg is going to drop the link in the chat box so you can you can go out and join if you want and come back and tell us that you joined. Um, if you're an uh, audio listener, the link is www.themfrcoach.com backslash coaching. If you are watching this on the recording, please refer to your email for the details and dates for enrollment. You can just go ahead and join now. You'll get immediate access to the course portal. You'll get the workbook delivered to your home and you'll be on your way to getting fully booked with 20 clients and making six figures or more every year. For those of you who enroll by Saturday, you will also receive an extra month in the program absolutely free. So you'll get 13 months of support, 13 months of calls, 13 months with the portal at no additional charge to you. And I'm just being funny right now. We're going to go a little crazy. I have 10 MFR coaches water bottles left. These are never coming back in stock. So get... If you want one, if you're one of the first 10 people that enroll, I will send you the water bottle too. So have fast fingers if you want those water bottles. I mean, who doesn't need another water bottle to stay hydrated? And it's super fancy. It has my logo on it. All right, let's go over some common questions that people have. One is, I'm brand new to MFR. Can I join? And the answer is yes, you can, as long as you've had at least one but I recommend three MFR seminars from John Barnes. So it doesn't count if you've had MFR training outside of John Barnes. It has to be John Barnes seminars. People want to know what time are the calls. The calls are always Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Central. And again, some people move their schedules knowing that that's going to be a reoccurring call. If that's not you and you can't do that, then you'll be one that comes and listens to the replay. People want to know, I've had my business for years. Is this still for me? And the answer is yes. We have therapists in here that have been in business for 20 plus years that have totally changed the face of their business, their comfort in their business, and the amount of money they earn and how they treat their patients, how they sell MFR to their patients. So absolutely, yes. This is for you if you're brand new. It's for you if you're a well-seasoned therapist. We have every, every flavor of therapist in here. I'm already fully booked. Is this something that I should spend money on? Absolutely, yes. And the question that I would ask you too is, are you fully booked, but are you seeing more than 20 clients? Are you overworking? Are you risking burnout? Are you under earning? Are you fully booked and making over six figures and only seeing 20 clients? Ask yourself those questions. I can help you fix those problems. Um, can I do this if I'm still working at a job or haven't opened my practice yet? Yes, you can. Chris Domingo is a good example of that. She joined and had no intention of leaving her business. And I just told her from the get-go, I will never encourage you to leave your business or leave your job. You can stay there as long as you want. She's just increased her ability and her capacity to see clients and make money. And now it's costing her money to stay at her job. So she's thinking about leaving. That can be true for you too. I will never say you have to leave your job in order to make your business work. That's going to be up to you. Happy to coach you on it. Um, but that's just a decision that you get to make. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, I know one other question that I was going to tell you guys. 
about doing this, uh, doing coaching and starting a business, even if you're still working at your job. So my client, Megan, she was in coaching for six months before she opened her practice. And she ended up leaving her high level PT job at, at the hospital she was working at two months later. So two months after opening her business. And after that, she had a $26,000 month and she made $86,000 her first six months in business. So you can absolutely leave a job and be fine. I will help you with that. You can stay at a job and be fine. You can open your business from scratch. There's lots of possibilities. That's just one huge win that I like to share with people because it's it's absolutely incredible. So now is the time for your questions. But before I answer those, I just want to let you know that on Tuesday, November 21st from 10 to 1130, that's our normal call time is from 10 to 11 central. I'm going to spend the, an extra 30 minutes on that call. And it's going to be dedicated to anyone new that joins so that we can answer questions and orient you to the program. So we'll spend some time doing that on that call. Just wanted to let you guys know that that's going to be available, but you can join now and literally be on the next coaching call on Tuesday. And before we get into questions, I just really want to reiterate how thankful I am for your time and your attention and for you guys showing up for your MFR businesses in this way. It's absolutely incredible to me. And I have to keep coming back into my body about how excited I am and how blown away I am by the support of the MFR community and having this job as the MFR coach. It's absolutely amazing. So for anyone here that has questions, you can drop them in the chat box, but it might be easier if you just raise your hand and come off mute and let's, let's just talk. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Hey, everybody. It's all my peeps. All right. So anybody, there's a hand raise option across the bottom of the Zoom screen. If you have a question about what we've learned today, if you have a question about the coaching program, if you're just curious, like, come on, ask me some questions. Meg, do you have any questions that you need to pull out for me? I, I do have a couple here that I want to make sure um, get covered. So Danielle asked, I graduate massage school in five weeks and more MFR training in January. Mm -hmm. Not sure I'm ready yet. We'll have three seminars after Florida in January. What would okay. you say? Okay. That's from Danielle. Yep. Are you here, Danielle? Do you want to talk? Just looking to see if you're here. You can unmute. There you go. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Hey, so you're in massage school. You've have you had one MFR seminar? Yes, MFR one in uh, summer. Awesome. And been practicing on friends, and that's all I want to do. Can't wait to graduate and get to what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. So I would say that this it's perfect to start your business making money. So if you can open your business making money, why wait? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of my thoughts. Um, I'll be teaching skiing in winter too. So my time is not huge, but, um, and I've been listening to all of your podcasts. Awesome. <laughs> I'm slowly working through the whole lot of them. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, it was like, I graduate in five weeks, then I have to do the, um, uh, Mblex massage test. Yep. So studying that. So it's like, you know, I'm someone who just jumps in and does everything. And it's like, hold on, slow down. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I was like, when, when will this one officially be starting? It starts as soon as you enroll. Right. Got it. Yeah. Cause it's like yep. right now I'm deep in school and don't have time for a month, mm -hmm. but then you have that add on month bonus. And I'm like, okay, that kind of helps. Yeah. And keep in mind, like, maybe you don't have time to come to the live call, but maybe you can listen to the replay in the call, in the car, like how, wherever you're listening to my podcast, Yeah, my podcast is amazing, right? I love my podcast. I love doing it. Can't stop, won't stop, but the coaching calls and the course curriculum are everything. What you're getting on the podcast is like my free shower thoughts, right? You're getting like in depth, real well thought out, well-planned training inside the course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening in my car on, to, on my way to massage school. I have six to eight hours a week that I'm sitting listening. Yeah. Well. So you actually have eight hours to consume content. You can listen to I any do. of that in the car. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Okay. If anything else comes up, let me know. Let's go to Allie and then we'll go, we'll throw it back to Meg for more questions. Hey, Allie, good to see you. Hey, nice to see you too. Nice to be here. Um, yeah. Thank you. And um, um, loved the loved class this morning. Um, the nose, I have, a, I have like, that was, that was the biggest like standout for me when we're going through the nose. Um, I get shut down when in social media, when mm -hmm. I'm, when I don't feel the reflection back over time. Okay. Yeah. So reflection back, do you mean like the amount of likes you get or shares or, Just, uh, or, uh, no, no, uh, actions, you know, action, like actions, like book to book booking. Appointment. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Or, or, or even engagement, just mm -hmm. engagement. It's really, yeah. and, and when I feel like, okay, I mean, we, I know we've, we talked about this, mm -hmm. you know, we, we talk about it. Um, it came up for me though here. It's like that. No is, is yeah. And then challenging usually, to always arise over, you know? Yeah. Well, I think it also, you have to let me know if this is true for you or not. Can you see how when you're posting on social media? Well, let me ask you this. You're posting on social media has not having the gratification of knowing that clients have come from social media, or maybe it's been, feels like, you post and it's crickets. Has that stopped you from continuing to post and put your message out there for other potential clients? Uh, it does. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Isn't that so interesting? It's like, we're so afraid of the rejection of someone not coming. We like reject the ability for them, for future people to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Hearing mm -hmm. me say that, like, is there any way for you to create safety for yourself to post and not have it mean anything, whether like no one needs to do anything. Like the only intention is to educate. Right. And knowing that it's none of our business, how that's actually reflected back to us in real life. Yeah. And I guess that's, the, I mean, that's the clarity of the message. Mm -hmm. And how to just keep posting, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, without the, re you know, with, with, yeah, with, again, turning it toward education, turning it toward mm -hmm. um, letting people know it exists in yeah. their realm, you know. Another reframe that's helped me, and I, hopefully it's helpful for you guys, is to post it without any attachment to anything coming back. It's like, I, my only purpose is for someone to read and learn about MFR and I'm not posting here to get clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's important. It also shows me that I need to go beyond social media. I want to start, you know, engaging the world around me outside of social media because it feels limiting. Yeah, you know, but but there is that room to educate, mm -hmm. and without you know the the return of reward. Yeah, personal. It's reward. kind of none of our business when it comes back to us, mm -hmm. but we have much more potential to have a different outcome, like to create more clients when more people know we're there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when we make that effort and it also like, this is the other thing for anyone who's hesitant to post on social media, the more you do it, the better at it you become and the clearer you get at how you talk to your clients because you're spending, it's like selling MFR on purpose, right? You're spending time, like thinking about it very purposefully. And the more you do that, then you'll probably like it's top of the mind. So like, then you're talking to it to about it, like at the dentist, at the grocery store, to your girlfriends, to, you know, to the online dating apps. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Like it just becomes so much more top of mind and who you are, like the fabric of who you are and what you do. That's mm -hmm. not so separate, like social media posts, like that, that seems very separate and outside of you versus like part of your fabric and part of like the whole mm -hmm. web of what you do. Nice. Yep. I like that. 
brain. Yeah. It's part of yeah. your fabric, right? It's just mm-hmm. part of part of you. Yeah, it's an aspect. It's an aspect of the day. It's an aspect of education. It's an aspect of being in community. It's but just an aspect. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's just so. part of what you do. And I think when you put it on like that, um, like that, this is just what I do now. It doesn't have to be so out of body or so like clunky or so tied Grassy. to, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it grasps. I feel graspy sometimes with it, mm, you know, yeah. just like want, but that's the want that's the like, yeah. The want to be like magnetizing, but like you said, I like it. It's none of our business, how it comes. You yeah. Know, which... And usually by the time it shows up, as money in our businesses or clients in our businesses, it's like a lag from the work that we've already put in. Mm-hmm. The money that you make in your business is completely lagging from the work you've already put out. It's so like by the time it shows up in money, like it's, you know, you don't know that timeline. It's usually kind of a bit of space between one and the other. Mm-hmm. So the more distance you put between yourself and putting the effort out there, the more distance you put between the clients coming and you seeing the money or you them seeing the results too. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> I kind the of more, the, the more, the more distance you, I put between my attachment to the client and the social media po- post, I'm just trying to say what you just said. <laughs> yeah. Like the more uh, you create for yourself, like mm-hmm, when you make it a big mm-hmm. deal to post or you make it mean something mm-hmm. and it, gives you a pot, like it makes you stop. Right. And so then it takes you longer to make another post. So mm-hmm. then it takes longer for mm-hmm. someone to mm-hmm. consume that post and maybe decide to come in. So then right. you, yeah, it just takes longer to get into your business too. Yeah. Yeah. Versus like posts every day, like not so much attachment. You're just doing it for fun. We look what I came up with today and not even checking the vanity metrics of like, did I get a like or a comment? Um, those mean nothing. Like it means something when you actually get the client that comes through the door, mm-hmm. but how will you know, unless you ask them where they came from. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hope that's Thanks. helpful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're welcome. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Gwen, how are you? And after Gwen, we've got Steven's hand is just. Okay. Finished. Got it. So okay. I'm coming to you next, Steven. We'll go to Gwen first. Hey, Gwen. Oh. Hey, thank you. As you know, I'm the equine. Yeah. Um, transitioning to people. So I have no problem doing the equine part of it and doing it. It's easy. But when people say, well, how, I don't even know how to bring up the people part with people. If yeah. that makes sense. How like, do you think- bring it up right now with horse owners? Cause like the horse isn't doing the transaction with you. Right. So, but that's super easy because I've been around for so long and I just will say, oh, you know, I noticed your horse is, you know, yeah. whatever he's off and I can help him do this. Mm-hmm. But my concern is like, if I'm meeting a new person or I'm at the dog park or I'm seeing someone play golf and they're like, I'm yeah. a golfer. I'm like, how do I tell them about MFR and use words that make sense as opposed to the it's a technique. It's a, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. It's kind of the same answer as the question I asked you before. How do you talk to the horse people in language that they understand? And how did you do it bef- like back before it became easy? Like you, you risked being bad, right? You tried things and you kept trying it until it became easy. And you're just like, I just do this and this and this. So I would just want you to know the same is available for you now with people. What do you need to hear? What did you need to hear about MFR that made you intrigued by it or that made you understand what was possible? I don't know that it worked, but like, let's say I'm chatting with someone and they say, oh, okay, my back hurts. And I say, mm-hmm. I can help you with that. That's a good start. How do I transition I guess that's the question. How do I transition from, I can help you back. I can help you with you, you know, run, whatever to mm-hmm. go ahead and let's book with me on Tuesday. How do all, I transition? All of those words that you just said work perfectly. There's I can no- help your back book with me on Tuesday. That's the whole conversation. It could be that easy. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Let's do it. Yeah. It just, there are no tricks. 
it's like the more human you are and the more you just tell the truth and you're like, I can help you. Do you, I, I can like literally get you in on Tuesday. Do you want, do you want this? And like letting them say yes or no, being willing to hear no. Okay. Voila. Like, why not try that? I didn't think about that. That seems too easy. I know it's not. We okay. like to complicate things, right? The more complicated, then the less chances of us having to do it, having to take the risk. The worst thing that can happen if you do that is they'll be like, no. Or they'll be like, I'm busy Tuesday. Can I ask them why? If I say your back hurts, can you, you want to see me? And they say, no. Can I say, well, don't you want to get better? Is that okay? Yeah. That's overcoming objections, right? Yeah. Okay. How's that sound? Try it. Yeah. It sounds easy, right? Just yeah. go try it. And then okay. use that evaluation that we talked about today. You're in coaching, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. So you can go in there, like watch overcoming objections. You can, um, there's modules in there on like evaluating. I think I talk about it on every coaching call, what went well, what didn't go well. And you're, and you're really answering those questions from you, not what other people did, what you did, said, or felt. Okay. And how, you know, what went well out of that? What can you recreate next time? What didn't go well? So you don't do it again next time. And what are you going to try differently? Okay. That's it. Okay. You've got this. Make sure you let us know how it goes. <laughs> I will. I will. I want to go out now and go do it. Even though I have yeah, to Yeah, do it. Courses. Do it now. I'll, I'll try and talk to the trainer and see if I can talk him into it. Amazing. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, let's go to Steven, who has his manual hand raised, <laughs> his real life hand. Are you able to unmute? Yes, I got you. Hi. Hey. So my situation is I have two jobs. One of them, I'm a massage therapist in a spa, and I've been incorporating myofascial release into my sessions. I mean, yesterday, somebody left me a $50 tip. That was a nice tip. But mm -hmm. the thing is that those clients belong to the spa so I can't really take them from there, from, from the spa without repercussions. The other thing I do is I work with an acupuncturist and I do stretching sessions there. And I've been incorporating myofascial release into some of them. Mm -hmm. The thing is that a lot of those people are already on packages that they bought from the PT and not from me. So I guess my, my situation is um, how the hell can I get them to go off of the stretching packages to come do MFR with me and at the same time, not necessarily step on Tim's toes. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I have a lot of people who rebook with me and it's, it's like, I really want to be able to get, cause I really want to get into coaching so bad. So I, I am under pressure. I, I really feel like I'm under pressure to be able to take advantage of this uh, payment plan. And I want to be able to get this uh, literally in the next couple of days. Um okay. So let's just take a deep breath, right? Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. This is for everybody. Everybody with us. Let's all take deep breaths. Okay. okay. All that's going on here is right now you currently work for other people. Yes. Okay. That's a circumstance, right? Your thought is I need to take the clients that I have with these two providers with me in order to be successful. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, that's definitely part of it. Okay. So then you feel anxious because yes. you're right. So you worry, you're like, you get frantic and you're thinking about like all the ways you can convince these people to come with you, but also you can't convince them because then you're going to get in trouble. And the result of that is like, you just spin and spin and you, you continue to work at these two jobs. Okay. Yes. No problem. But have you considered that there are thousands of bodies that you've never even interacted with that could create your, that you could have come into your practice and create your own practice without the help of anybody else. Yeah, no, totally. It's like, my father is a dentist, for example, he doesn't have a lot of TMJ patients, but I could ask him. If he How does he not have TMJ? Like if you have a jaw, you probably have TMJ, right? He, I mean, he may have some patients, but I mean, I could definitely check with him. The other thing is I did send out a Facebook post post, but I only did it once and yeah. I know that you are an advocate of blasting emails out like how often should, like maybe I should join more than one local Facebook group and like maybe just 
send it out like what every day every couple of days there's no formula for it right the thing is is like when you get out of your own way and when you decide I'm my best referral source and I can create clients and I can do this like when you finally give yourself permission that it's safe for you okay build your dream instead of someone else's yes then you start to get creative about all the ways you can make that happen right one of the avenues is to start being louder on Facebook group or to start collecting emails and stuff like that. But there really is no magic formula, but yeah. Like if you take me as an example, I have never been more purposeful with selling the idea of selling MFR than I was in the last 30 days. Right. Like I think I sent 30 emails. If you signed up right away, you only got one, but everybody else until the very last day got over 30 emails. That's fine. Okay. You can do that. There's no, but you don't have to. Like, I work for a coach that, or I work with a coach that suggests sending five a day. I, I don't like that. I'm not going to do that. 30 seemed like a lot. There's no magic formula, is what I'm saying. You get to do what you want to do, what feels good to you. But the more purposeful you are and the more you're focused, like, you're, what result do you want to have in the next 30 days? What do you want to say you've created? That's a good question. Um, I mean, so I, I, again, I just took these seminars recently and it's like, I love being able to practice. It's yeah. wonderful. When I can say like, you're on I an MFR purpose. seminar high, but in 30 days, what do you want to say you've created? Um, let me write that down because I just want to keep that as like something that I keep in the back of my, in the front of my mind. Let me see. So um, let me see in next 30 days. What, what can I say? I want to say I have created. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you want to be able to say you've created? I want, so in the next 30 days, I want to be able to say, and then I'll just put an ellipsis after that. Um, I want to say that maybe I was able to help somebody with their TMJ or their chronic headaches or after, I don't don't know how many. What do you want for you though? Oh, what do I want for me? Yeah. And maybe you're. I, I, I want to be able to feel like I'm really. I guess I'm getting this work out there. It's like the, the, the training is in my, and even though I don't remember everything we did in the seminars, it's, you know how that goes. Yep. <laughs> it's I just the, said um, pelvis for the ninth time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the first time. I can't wait. But anyway, um, what do I want to be able to say? I, I want to be able to create for myself. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to say, and this is something I've thought of. I want to be able to sell three packages of six, in the next 15 days, I don't know if that's realistic, but <laughs> it's okay. I, I would like to, I, I don't think it's entirely unrealistic to say, say that I could sell somewhere between two to three packages of six in the next. Is that in your own business or someone else's business? I mean, I have, I, it's, I would be seeing people at the PT's office, like okay. the rest of the space that what, I have. What is your availability to like set up shop? For yourself I what, mean, what do you imagine that's going to take for you to do like how many barriers are in the way between where you're at now and 30 days from now like having a treatment room where you can see your own patients with no strings attached to other people yeah uh, that's I, I, I'd have a lot of barriers right now I just have tell a, me what I, they are I mean I'm living at home it's um okay. I uh what are my other barriers living at home it's it's uh I, in terms of, it's like, I have a lot of money wrapped up in fascial pelvis. I have, um, again, like a lot of the patients that I'm currently seeing are in packages on, in, in the PT's office. Um, you know, I don't have, are you allowed credit. to, are you allowed to, credit. inside the um, place where you work, are you yes. allowed to sell your own? Like, are you a contractor? Are you an employee? Like, what is the setup? I am an independent contractor and, and Tim, the, the PT, like he has been, he has said to me, he would be fine with me selling myofascial there instead and charging my own rates. I am. Okay, an so contractor. what's keeping you from doing that? That sounds like the easiest path. I mean, I've made a few offers. It's just, nobody's accepted. Yeah. So what? And I just, I guess it's just figuring out how to like, I guess, identify where are their objections? Yeah. How can you take what you learned today and put it into action towards yes. your goal of selling what's like let's have this goal of selling three packages but what if you just sell three treatments yeah and you know three I different did, I was, people. 
Definitely. I listened to one of your recent podcasts and I, I actually took this from one of, I'm trying to remember. She said that she asked her clients, how many sessions would you be willing to try? Yeah. And, and I did that with one of them and she said four now. And then did you say why four? Um, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when you can like slow everything down and get super purposeful, like if your only goal is to sell three sessions, like, yes right? You have a lot of work to do to do this. You need to figure out what your rate is and you want to make sure it's set on facts and data, like using okay. your rate bootcamp, right? You want to know how to overcome objections. You want to be able to use that module. The, these are all money making, cons like you're consuming this content in order to make money sooner and to help people quicker. Yes, absolutely. You really do it on your own and, and you'll still have to do trial and error. You'll still have to do trial and error in my program. Okay. But it will collapse the time between where you are and where you want to go. It will collapse the time. It will collapse the confusion. And I want, I just want to point out just one thought you have that I don't know is how hel is helpful to you. When you have the thought, I have a lot of money wrapped up in fascial pelvis or any other seminar. If anyone else is suffering with a thought like this, how is that mon how is the money you've paid for that training actually an investment in your future self in your ability to help clients more deeply okay What's the value of that and like how many thousands of dollars are you going to be able to make because you took that same with like investing in the coaching program $3000 probably seems like a mortgage right it's like that is so yeah. much money but if you pay $3,000 and you learn how to make $3,000 a week, is it worth it? Like, is that investment worth it? What if you could make $3,000 each and every week? Absolutely. I, so I totally that's agree. the intention behind, like, not just spend this money and then like peace out and never get your money back. Like make your money back in the first 90 days, make your money back in the first week. We've had people do it. Totally. And I guess and living at home is not a problem. How is that the best support and like luxury to have right now? Let me know. It is great to have it. I'm, I'm just saying like right now it's, um, I'm just like wondering what I'm going to do with my legacy clients. Like, cause they're used to paying me about 105 for a stretch. You learn like, all about what to do in raise rate. Okay. Yeah. There's a fix okay. for all of these problems. You are not alone. This is not unique. And this isn't even that big of a deal. I want to let you know. Okay, no, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that because maybe yeah. I'm making this a bigger deal than- Yeah, I, we all do I, it. Okay. Dude, I, you I, have the best setup. You you are an independent contractor already and you can like do what you want to do and, and set your own rates. Like you just have to pay a percentage or pay rent to these people. I, I would have to pay $25 to use the room every time it's one of my clients. Oh my God, that's like free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, this I mean, is so I good. You did. This is not a problem. Okay. Even, not a problem. All right, Heather. Thank you. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. I appreciate it. It's yeah. good to finally meet you, by the way. Yeah, it's good to meet you. Thanks yeah. for the emails. Of course. All right. <laughs> who else? You. Who else has <laughs> questions about the training, about selling MFR, about the program? You can ask me questions about me. I'm going to just stay on as long as you guys are here. He's staring at you. Meg, is there anything in the yeah. chat? I, I would love it if you would just repeat for folks about the extra month bonus. Oh, yeah. Um, so it, when you enroll... I think I think we might have had in the PowerPoint, the presentation that it goes till Friday, but it actually goes till Saturday at midnight. Yes. Sat so if you enroll by Saturday at midnight, you get like the baker's dozen of coaching. You get 13 months instead of 12. That's a baker's dozen, right? No extra cost. It aut You automatically get the tag. So you automatically get that extra month. So you get to coach for a whole month for free, which is so fun. I'm wondering, um, there's a great question from, oh, good. Is it Kate or is it Kate Tep? I wonder if she, Kate, do you want to, can you unmute Kate? Do you want to share your question or I can read the earlier one? Okay. Can't unmute. Okay. Let me read okay. your first one. I think um, I see this one is it? I find there's massive spread between. Yeah. Let me give you her. Charge. Yeah. What she wrote earlier was, I find there is sometimes a massive spread between what an MFR therapist elsewhere has charged 
and sent their clients to the directory and then clients seek out same MFR treatment with a significantly higher rate. How to answer when they ask why? Okay, good question. I think this comes up a lot. This came up during um, Razor Rate Bootcamp. Actually, a therapist asked me, like, how can new therapists charge so much? And da, 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 da. My answer is this your rate should really reflect facts and data, first of all. You learn what that means in Razor Rate Bootcamp, and also should reflect what you want to be earning. So the, what I charge and what Allie charges and what Steven charges and what Danielle charges should vary wildly because all of our expenses are going to be different. The amount of seminars we attend are going to be different. And all of that should be figured into your rate. Also, most MFR therapists have not considered how much do I want to be making, right? They've left it up to what other people are charging, what they feel comfortable charging, so yeah, it varies wildly. It doesn't necessarily, like you might be uncomfortable if someone comes up to you and asks you, why does this therapist charge this? And why does this therapist charge this? But really the simple answer is because they can and they do. Like it's, it's, it's okay for the client to have thoughts and feelings about other people's rates. What really matters is that you feel good and you understand why you charge what you charge um, and you're clean about it. And it really won't matter when anyone asks you. I hope that, I hope that answers that for you. Put it in the chat. If it doesn't, if you have another question, someone was wondering about the time for live coaching. Those are all of the live coaching calls outside of pop-ups, which are kind of random, um, are 10 AM central on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, 10 AM central. Okay. Sage says lately, I've had a few clients leave for other therapies that are covered by insurance. Initially, I was concerned by this until I had the realization that it leaves room on my schedule for other clients, for new clients that want MFR and don't mind paying for it. Yes. And where did you not ask them what they were hoping to get for at these other modalities? What did, what relief are they hoping to get by ha not having to pay cash? Right. Are they actually going to get better doing traditional therapies or are you able to help them better? And like really being able to say those things. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have another one, Heather. Yep. Tell me. What if I'm not sure I want to do MFR only? Is the program right for me? Good question. I talk a lot about MFR only. You get, it's your business. You could do whatever you want, actually, and I won't ever know the difference as long as you're not going to be offended by me talking about it being MFR only. I'm not going to change the way I talk about it, but you get to decide what you want. And usually what I find, because I have people that join and they, you know, they want to keep working. They want to do this modality. MFR is a tool in their tool chest. You will have trouble charging the rate that you can charge for MFR if you are using MFR as a tool in your, your tool chest, like your belief level in MFR being the modality that's going to get people the results, maybe isn't going to be there uh, the same way it is with someone who does MFR only. You can try this and see how it works for you. Every, all of the information you're going to get really could help any service-based business, but we are a community of MFR therapists. I do encourage you to be MFR only. So if you can handle not being offended by that, then come on in. I'm never going to try to boss you around and make you do it my way. I want you to do it your way with the information that I provide. I hope that helps. Another question that came up and just in case I answered it, but just in case folks didn't see it was um, how long do we have access to the materials in the program and to the Facebook group? Mm -hmm. I speak to that. Yeah. So it's 12 full months of access. So weekly coaching every single week for 12 months. If you sign up before, if you sign up by Saturday, you get 13 months of that. Same with the course access, same with the private podcast access, same with um, the Facebook group. So it's access, access, access for the whole entire time, the support the entire time. 
And you know, what's fun about that is like, if you have a vacation coming up or you have to like put your business training on pause for a few weeks, you can put it on pause and like in your brain and come back anytime during that 12 months. Right. So that is fun. All right. Who else? Who wants, this is your time, live coaching, answer your questions, whatever you want. We're going to spend a few more minutes here. I'm happy to answer. If you've gone out and you've signed up, tell us in the chat. Like, I want to know who am I sending water bottles to? I had a few people sign up before the webinar even started, which is blowing my mind. Tell me, tell me. Actually, tell me too, like, what did you love most about this experience? What are you able, what are you going to put into practice today, tomorrow, Friday? If you work on Saturdays, what are you going to put into practice? I want to know. Oh, I love, Lindsay said, I love the simplicity of selling MFR easy as the core of MFR. Yes. Yes. And Lindsay was also interested in signing up but wouldn't be able to hop on the Tuesday calls for a few months. That's okay. Listen to those call replays. They are so valuable. You will love it. Listen in the shower. Listen on your way to work. Kathy. Hey, Kathy. I feel like I just saw you in Rochester, Minnesota. What's up, girl? <laughs> just come on mute because I can't hear you. <laughs> yes. Hi. I think you'd recognize me. Hi. That was Hi. my second. I recognize your lateral shift anywhere. How's it going? Oh, <laughs> Notice this and <laughs> yes, I, just I wasn't expecting that. I thought he might just share a little technique. I didn't expect to wind in front of 54 people. <laughs> <laughs> what can I help you with? Oh gosh. So I just get stuck on how to even bring it up to people. I don't, you know, friends or um, I'm a ballroom dancer too. So I know those folks could benefit, but, but you know, you don't want to go up to somebody and start asking them about are you having any pain or I know I could help you? Yeah. It's just, it's just bringing it up. I know my husband has tended to bring it up to people, but I, as Meg said, I just need to educate him because there, you know, if he hears a friend or somebody say, Oh, I've got this issue going on. And, you know, he'll say, well, Kathy's trying to build her business. So and I says, perhaps that's not the best way to put it. Cause they'll make it sound like I'm a beginner, beginner, Mm -hmm. I also do energy-based um, work too, okay. um, which I've been doing for a long time, but it's just bring, initially bringing it up and how to get it out yes. there, I guess, or bring it up to people without being obnoxious about yeah. it. <laughs> how do you talk about your energy-based business? Like how, how do you show up in that business? Well, that's the other piece I just retired from. I was in healthcare, Western medicine for 40 plus years and retired a year and a half ago. And awesome. Then got married. And so my life was in transition. And now that I'm, and I've always had a healing room, but now that my space is even more amenable because we've settled into, we've cut, combined two households. But yeah. now I feel like the energy and the space and everything to really do this. So other than people that I knew or other peers, you know, exchanging or family, I had mm -hmm. been doing a whole lot of that. So now what are your thoughts about yourself as an MFR therapist? Like, do you think of yourself as an MFR therapist or do you still kind of identify with whatever you were doing? What were you doing in healthcare before? Were you a PT? Healing touch. Oh, I was healing a cer I'm a certified healing touch. Oh, practitioner. But in my regular, uh, my other bill paying job, yeah. um, I was a diagnostic sonographer uh, and there's a huge need for this work for us because yes, there's such absolutely. a huge repetitive stress injury rate. Absolutely. Do you, okay. So I heard you say like in my bill paying job, right? Yes. Like, do you, have you explored, have you allowed for space to have your MFR, your energy healing practice, be that be like, have you imagined what it would be like to have six figures a year doing this? Well, perhaps not that if I could just, why not a few people a month, I guess. Yeah. Yes. I, like, have... I think we limit ourselves. Like we don't even allow, and I did this too. Like, I didn't even like know this was a thing <laughs> a few years ago. I was like, what? I could make six figures. What is happening? Right. Cause I didn't allow myself to dream about it because it was, I was okay with having just enough or just, just a, just a sprinkle. Right. 
be thankful so, for and, the sprinkle that you're getting, right? And, I, and I've also, I'm a certified Qigong instructor, which I've done for many years, although that has, just because of COVID, made that a huge shift. Uh -huh. And I started that back in the late nineties because I thought someday when I am retired and have more time, I want to be, I'm through my own personal journey and healing journey uh -huh. experience, have ex experienced all of this work and have found the benefit. And I have felt the passion to share it with others. And so it's been a journey of building towards that. And now I feel like since my physical space is really open for that. And my physical energy is better. Um, There's like literally nothing in the way now. All you have to do is like open your the, mouth, right? Well, and my confidence and actually after repeating fascial pelvis, but I was part of that nowhere Nelly. It's like, oh, you know, I want to make sure don't, you know, don't want to, know if I want to do this to people I don't know until I'm more confident or I'm better yeah. or, you know, that whole mm -hmm. mindset. How do you, with the how do you like the way you get better though, is being willing. I'm like doing talking to this, like I'm going to eat it. It's like do is doing it right. And it doesn't have to mean you have to do it on people that, you know, I think the thing we do sometimes is we think we're going to feel safer when we do it on people that say that we know, because they're going to be nice to us. But most people are nice to us. Like most people that come in and even when they pay us, especially when they pay us, they really like what we do for them. We just have to be willing to let them have their own thoughts, their own feelings, like their own model. <laughs> they have got circumstances that we don't know anything about. And we aren't reliable on if we're going to feel good or bad about ourselves based on that interaction. Like work on feeling so good and confident, the confidence doesn't come from more seminars. It comes from you deciding that you're good enough right now, right where you're at to handle whoever walks yeah. into your room. And if you're not, you are confident that you know how to refer somebody out. Well, and I had done some work on my neighbor who was having bad shoulder pain mm -hmm. and it came up and she was talking outside with my husband and I, and he, she brought it up and my husband said, Oh, you need to see Kathy because she's worked on me and she's really good. Yeah. So she to me and she said and she had had needed really MRI of her neck and shoulder so I wanted to be kind of work gingerly not knowing what was going on for her um and I initially sent her to an expert at my and talented but she came to me because the pain continued yeah and I was one of those it's like listen to your body kind of if you if you feel the need to come yeah. back but she had said to me I slept the best that night after your session that I have and forever. And yeah. it felt so good. And I could see doing this weekly. And then of course, after that, she didn't come. Um, and we chatted and she said, Oh, I went back. She was trying to get into a PT that her insurance would pick up because of whatever. And she still had her issues. And she said, um, Oh, I had the, I went to my Thai massage therapist and it was really good. It really, really hurt. And I just kind of cringe, like it doesn't have to be painful, you know, and it felt good. And, and I know she's busy with work and I don't know where she's at. And yeah. as far as wanting to come back, if she'll do that. Yeah. Or not. It's really just a matter of deciding that you are good enough right where you're at. Doesn't mean don't take more seminars, always take more seminars and get better and yeah. better at your skill development. Just don't make your confidence dependent on that. And then I love this. Like your like first inclination is I'm going to, I'm going to refer out to the expert near me. How do you think that person became the expert? Right. Well, right. and I've so taken. You gotta I... let yourself treat those patients. You had good results, right? And then yeah. look at that situation without ever having to talk to this patient again. What in the last interaction you had with them went well that you did or said, right? What didn't go well? Like, what do you wish you would have said? And what do you want to do differently next time? So that when the next patient comes to you or the next interaction at a crosswalk, which is where I prefer to do my MFR selling, like you get to say the thing that you didn't say last time, but it starts with you really purposefully starting to come up with what you're going to say. Okay. An example of this, like you were at, um, fascial pelvis this weekend, I got to come up on the stage and talk. And like, I keep telling myself, I'm going to type something out so that I don't leave anything out because this is really important for me to get my message out. 
but I keep not doing it because I keep being like worried about it or, you know, whatever, like worried about doing it perfectly. So I keep not doing it. And then I get up there on the stage. First of all, I like leave my body immediately. I can't remember even what my name is or what I do or something I was going to say. And then I don't even tell you guys what coaching does. What is the result of working with me, right? It's see 20 clients or less and make hundred K. I didn't even say that. So I'm like flabbergasted that you even made it here with the words that I said, but I evaluated after that. I didn't beat myself up. I now have a speech to give in Nashville. If I ever get lucky enough to get on the stage again, to talk about the program and I have something to do differently next time, but I've done this three or four times in a row without making changes. And I finally let myself evaluate it and actually put in a game plan for next time. Do you see? Well, and I've been, I started learning this from John five years ago. Yeah. And so you're not new. You're not new. Vacation series twice. And I've done FP twice. Yeah. The other, how often though, do you still tell yourself that you're a new therapist? Yeah. I've been probably doing that. (laughs) Yeah. You're not new. No. Well, and the other quick question is, so I, I created that vision and on my business card, when I had changed my last name, when I got married, I actually added uh, my, my two other no- modalities, but myofascial release. And I put practitioner, you know, John Barnes approach certainly, yeah. but practitioner versus therapist. And I don't know if one is more appropriate than the other, because it, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. They're both equally. So since mm-hmm. I don't have a background as a massage therapist, do you have a license to touch? I do. And that's with my healing touch. Yeah. You have a license to touch. You're an MFR therapist. You have to decide that you are though. You have to stop telling yourself you're new. Stop waiting for the next seminar to get the, the juice, right? Like, you know, enough. You just forgot. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Glad to see you. Good to see you too. All right. Who else? Who else wants some support, has a question, is afraid to join, has already joined? I'm missing like 42 messages. (laughs) Meg, you got anything for me? I don't have any other. I think all the other questions have kind of been answered. Okay. As we've gone through, I wonder if anybody has any questions about what's in the program. Like, yeah. Do you-, do you guys want to see a behind the scenes? Want me to log in and show you? Anybody want that? All right, let's do it. Hold one second while I log in. And I don't know, maybe, maybe you mentioned this, but just to emphasize it, it doesn't matter if you're a massage therapist, if you're an OT, if you're a PT. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. As long as you've had training with John Barnes. My computer is running slow. Meg, will you check on your end and see if you can log in? I'm wondering if the site is down. Or maybe we're just, we're having so much traffic from you all. It's like crashing the site. Pretty sure that's the problem. I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Here we go. That wasn't happening. Okay. Let me share my screen. Mine up too, so whichever. See you later, Rochelle. Um, okay. I just forgot where the share screen button was. Now I see it. Okay. So you go to my website and then there's this convenient student login button. You log in. And this is what you see. So you will not see this mastermind library. That is for my other program, but you'll start with the start here where I have a wonderful video. I just love the way the video stops on my face and you get um, the order of the operations for the foundation. You can download the book. You can purchase one if you want, but for everybody that's joining right now, you're going to get one sent to you. 
you complete your intake form and then you go over and you join the Facebook community first and foremost. And you also get an email with all that information. Then here we've got the 90 day foundations where you immediately start with completing raise your rate bootcamp. You'll go through all five days of that training. And then you fill out this form to let us know what you've changed. The um, workbook is available to you here, but you also get the fully printed out workbook inside the big workbook that I send. So five days of training there. And then we get into the course content, which includes all of these bricks, pricing and packages. Lots of people have questions about that. There's some old trainings in here I did, one called Fully Booked and Beyond. And then we send you through these other trainings. Each one of these has multiple trainings for you to go to. Meg even talks about a part of the training in here. Um, talk about organic marketing and what do you really need on your website? So social media trainings, there's a Canva template tutorial. Uh, I give you a customizable guide, patient's guide that you can upload into Canva and just make it your own, which is awesome. Give you social media graphics that you can use and sample MFR photography, which is pictures of me doing MFR and you can use them on your website wherever you want. We talk about speaking to your best fit clients. I hired a woman from Tasmania that came in and she did two 90 minute presentations on speaking to your best fit clients. You get all of her training in here. Really like we have everything. We have special trainings on money and financing, and I'm constantly bringing in and trying to improve the course content with even more strategies. We've got bonus coaching over here. We have everything from how to heal your inner child for your business growth to uh, improving your search engine optimization, how perfectionism keeps you stuck, using your body to complete a stress cycle. Donna Height, who's a member of the Mastermind and the 12-month program, she comes in and does a training on setting up your SEO. So after you've gone through the training with Brittany, then you can get another training with Donna. Amber Dybert comes in and does a training on imposter syndrome and, uh, yeah, we've got Kristen King coaching and Jessica Wayno. So lots of guest coaches have come in, you get access to all of that, but one of the really cool things is these group coaching replays. You also get a free copy of my book. If you don't already have one, we literally have Every coaching call I've ever done since October of 2021, every single coaching call. So that's hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours of content you can consume. Uh, the 12 month programs start, we kicked that off in August. It's, it's a rolling enrollment. So even if you're enrolling here in November, you still get the 12 months that you get tagged and the system keeps you in. For the full 12 months, if you enroll by Saturday, you get the 13 months, um, but here's all the recordings just since, just since August, like there's a lot every week. So there's that. Any questions about the course portal? You also can report wins and you do that and you fill out this form and it goes directly to me. You give me permission to share it or not share it. Maybe you just want me to know about it. And then when I'm having a really bad day, I go back and I look in those and I see where everybody is doing awesome. And then I get to feel like all of this is worth it, even on a bad day. It's really fun. And I highly recommend you guys do that with your client wins too. Who else? Do I have any of my clients here that are in the program that want to come off and talk about their experience? Maybe you want to share a win or a struggle that you've helped, you've had help with. I'm open for that too. You can just come off mute. Sheila signed up. All right. Danielle's signing up on Saturday. Awesome. Cool. I'm so excited for you guys. So excited. Okay. 23 of you guys are still here for a reason, right? We're looking at, I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. What can I do to help you? What can I do to ease your mind? Maybe you have a question that you think is silly. There's literally no, no silly answer. There's Erica. What's up? Hi, Heather. Hi. <laughs> um, I was, I wanted to 
ask um so you know I've done all the things like I have I have um got on my online booking I've done I've did that vendor fair oh no <laughs> you're still there you're still good I think oh maybe we lost her all right Cindy, if you're still here, I got your message. If you're having difficulty, just go ahead and um, you can put NA, you could put zero and we can um, clear up that confusion later in coaching. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about doing things perfectly. That is for sure. All right. Okay. Who else? I'm going to stay here until there's nobody on the Zoom. So... <laughs> I think too, some people have questions like, maybe you're like me. I, I really believed that I knew it all and that coaching programs were gimmicky and that I was going to get scammed by joining one. And I had friends that had joined coaching programs and it just seemed like they joined and then they had to do a lot of work. I want you to know that while doing a coaching program is going to be work, it is not about creating more work for you to do in the long run, if that makes sense. I've created this program so that you can have more ease in your business so that you can make more money than you ever dreamed of. So that the ceiling you had imagined for yourself becomes the floor and we create a new ceiling. I just want you guys to really understand and know how powerful you are as MFR therapists and how when we create a world where you guys are never under earning and never burning out. And you have this really focused support for your business, for your specific business. The sky is the limit and you're going to help more people. And that really is the goal. And the goal also is for you to just feel good in your practice and not feel so alone. Someone is asking about the free podcast. Yeah, just search for the MFR Coaches podcast anywhere online. You can also go to my website, the mfrcoach.com, and there's a link um, for the podcast, and you can subscribe right there. And I will shoot you an email every week with a link to the episode. You can do that if you want. Who else? What's happening? Erica's back online. We should. Oh, Erica. Yeah, so, yeah, are you? Question. Sorry, my my um computer died. <laughs> it had been giving me warnings like for a long time. So anyway, so I was um, I think I I wanted to ask a question. Like I was with someone the other day, and um, they were like, "So what is it that you're doing again, Erica?" And <laughs> so I um. I froze <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I, you could, you have to really experience it. Right. And then my husband was with me. He was like, oh, so you know about fascia, right? So he like goes on into this whole. We love like these husbands that are like, just like <laughs> get what my wife has. Right. Yeah. Okay. I want you to know it's totally fine that you froze. Okay. It's normal. Right. Like let's just normalize it. Right. I froze on stage last weekend. It's totally normal, but what happens when you start practicing for this outside of the actual interaction, right? What do you want to say to people other than you have to experience it for yourself? Because telling them that kind of alienates them from asking you more questions, right? Because they're going to think, oh, I'm not going to be able to say anything until I've tried it, right? So right. what can you say to them? What do you know about what's possible for people if they get treatment with you? What do you just know as facts? Um, I know that they can have reduced pain. Mm -hmm. I know that they could sleep better. I know that they can have more energy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, okay. And if they're sleeping better and they have less pain and they have more energy, what, what are they then doing? They're able to do their daily, their daily able to run or do things that they weren't able to do while they were having pain or they couldn't sleep or, yeah. you know. Also imagine this, right? When you're in pain, 
all of your thoughts and all of your energy goes to trying to solve for the pain or eliminate the pain, right? Mm -hmm. None of us are like, I just want to be with this pain right now and do everything else that I have on my list, right? (laughs) When you're not having to focus on pain, you get to focus all of your time and attention on every other thing that you would rather be doing. So like, imagine how much extra time you have in your day when you're not so focused on that. Right. It's like life changing. And I don't think we offer it that loudly or that proudly or that boldly because we're like, but maybe not. (laughs) So, so, so say it like that. Yeah. But you can just be like, I help people with chronic and unexplained pain eliminate having to think about pain anymore. Because I, I always, sometimes I think my default is, oh, it's a manual therapy technique that can help you get out of pain. Yeah. You're talking about the modality, right? Yeah. 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 Instead of like, talk about, okay. Yeah. Talk about what's possible for them when they've had lots of sessions with you, right? Mm-hmm. Talk about what their result is 10 sessions from now. Gotcha. And like you start thinking 10 sessions ahead for what's possible for them. And that'll be easier for you to sell those 10 sessions too, because you're like, duh, why wouldn't you want this? Okay. I want the one session special where you get one session results. You want the 10 sessions. Right, right, right. But you have to be sold on that too. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I would go in and I know you've been working the program. I know you've been doing all of this, but like go in and just like revisit those belief modules and just see where you're like still a little sticky on your belief in yourself as a therapist. Yes, I was listening to an old coaching call that you were, you did the, uh you did a while back and you mm-hmm. did somebody was having the same kind of issue like and you were like go back to the belief triad. Yep. And I said I was going to do that um and see where I am mm-hmm. where I am in being stuck or whatever because yeah. I don't have I haven't been able to like get anybody yet. And I've been doing stuff, right? So remember what I said earlier about like, we never know what the work we're putting in right now, like when that's going to actually show up for us as client paying clients, right? Right. So Mm -hmm. every time your brain is like, but I'm doing stuff and I still don't have this result. If you Mm -hmm. weren't having that thought loop, what would you be focused on? And Uh what would you be doing? Yeah. And how would you be feeling? Right? Because when you're like, I'm doing stuff. And I don't have the result and you're feeling frustrated. Yeah. What do you do when you're frustrated? You get sad and you don't do anything. <laughs> yeah. And you think this isn't working. This is bullshit. This right? isn't working. Yeah. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like, everything's working. I'm feeling shaky. I'm going to go watch that belief triad. And then I'm going to go listen to a coaching call. I'm going to come for coaching and raise my hand live. And I'm going to like get my head on in the way I want it to be on because I know I'm an MFR therapist and I can help anyone who walks into my room. I just have to be willing to say it out loud to people that are strangers outside of my treatment room. Right. But this is like another thing for everybody that's here. Being willing to talk to these strangers who potentially will never come for treatment is such a good playground for practicing how to talk to people. You literally have nothing to lose. Yeah. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? They'll be like, no. And they walk away. Right. But you're not like a person at the mall handing out a flyer or like, Ooh, those annoying people at Costco that are always trying to sell you a cell phone. Right. You're Mm -hmm. not them. And even if you are, who cares? Like, I don't, I don't really, yeah, those annoying people at Costco are fine, but like, they haven't ruined my day by offering me a cell phone. Got it. Mm -hmm. Steven's wondering if raise your rate bootcamp is separate from the coaching program. You have to sign up for coaching to have access to it right now. Yeah. I did sell it for a while, but I don't anymore because I really feel like, yes, you can go through that and you can raise your rate, but it's the surround coaching for the 12 months that actually makes you capable of charging any rate you want. So I want you to be in the program. Thank you, Heather. You're welcome, Erica. So good to see your face. Nice to see you too. See ya. See ya. See ya. All right. Who else? What do you see, Meg? Looking good. I think people just like listening to your voice. That's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) You guys. 
Yes. Yep. There is, there are, um, there definitely are raise your rate bootcamp tape trainings on the podcast, low key secret secrets. <laughs> All right, Sarah Martin, what's happening for you? What did you think of this training? What was your takeaway? I'm going to call you out. Sarah is one of our other coaches in the program. She's also an MFR therapist. Um, I thought this training was great. I actually was looking at my numbers of the um, investment that I made in my coaching mm -hmm. over the course of the last um, two years versus what people are, uh, um, their people's current therapist investment. And mm -hmm. it's mind blowing the amount that um, of what they're going to be receiving, like over the course of the next 12 months. It's so, it's so amazing. So I just, yeah. I'm really excited. Like yeah. I, I really like being in it and being able to go back over things. It's kind of like being in a John Barnes, um, going and taking repeats. Yeah. I get to go back and repeat different sections because it changes at, um, different steps of my, um, entrepreneurial development. Yeah. And so there's different sticking points that show up. And so it's having that, um, support through all those steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. It is true. It's like, you can, you can even take raise your rate bootcamp right now, go through it, raise your rate. And then maybe a year or two years from now, we have therapists that are doing this, that have been coaching with me since I first became a coach that are still coaching with me because they love it and they find so much value in it. And they're repeating raise your rate bootcamp and like putting their new offers out into the world today with all of this support. And it's like, they've become the therapist that thought a $10 rate increase was crazy and like mind blowing. And now they're the therapist that can raise their rate $75, right? Which is like <sighs> mind blowing. And for anyone who's getting anxiety from hearing that it's okay. You can do it too. I will help you do it. <laughs> you can do it too. All right. You're welcome, Stephen. We'll see you in coaching. I can't wait. Can't wait. So excited. All right. I just want to reiterate too, like how exciting it is to have so many MFR therapists like that are interested in this work and the work that I'm doing. And I've been so supportive. Um, I could not do this without you guys, right? Like if you guys were like, I don't need to learn any of this, I would not have a job. And I've created a job for myself and it's one of the best jobs in the world outside of my very own MFR practice. Being able to engage and work with MFR therapists every day and for you guys to get to engage with them, with other people, other MFR therapists in the community every day is very rewarding. And I have to say like having... You know, we have these businesses where we work by ourselves, but we get to come together once a week or you get to see, and it's like being together, see everybody on the replay. It's so fun. You don't have to wait for a seminar. You get that surround care, that interaction. It makes it so being in your own private practice isn't so lonely. I remember driving to my practice in Onalaska, Wisconsin, and like, I'd start to get this like feeling on my way there, like, I'm so alone. Like I am going to be by myself again all day long. And I am hoping, and what my whole vision of creating this program is, is that you guys never have to feel alone like that, the way that I did. So fun. All right. Thanks, Sarah. All right, everybody. We're going to give it one more call for questions. If you're afraid, it's okay. Like I will be nice to you. I promise. <laughs> Let me know any last questions. All right. So just so you guys all know, I will be sending out a replay. You'll have until November 15th to watch the replay. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you take this information and you apply it. The worst thing you could do would be be here and you don't take any action on it. That would make me very sad. So take action on it. Join coaching as soon as possible so that you get the support and you never under earn 
and you never burn out in your MFR practice, no matter where you're at. Seasoned therapist, brand new therapist, everybody in between. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining me today. My mission is to help every MFR therapist become a part of the movement where no MFR therapists ever under earn or burn out. Join my 12 month coaching program. You'll spend the first 90 days setting up your foundation to create your six figure business. Then you'll go to work and uncover exactly what's holding you back from the business that you want and desire. Get support while you raise your rates, set your policies, and learn how to talk about MFR and how to sell MFR in service of your clients. Learn exactly how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town and even if you've had your business for years. This program is open to all MFR therapists who want to create what is possible when you stop playing small and start showing up in your full power as the John Barnes trained MFR therapist you are. Put your magic to work in the world and help more people get out of pain and back to active lifestyles. I'll help you do it. Go to www.themfrcoach.com backslash coaching and sign up right now.